Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I make reference to these portions of the testimony only to give you an idea, not of my opinion with regard to that, but what was in the record and conceded insofar as total acreage and the respective claims of the parties, and only to remind you of those in case you may have overlooked the actual acreage of the actual amounts claimed. However, there is nothing that I say that is not dependent upon your understanding of the facts, and you are the ones at liberty to decide for yourselves what you remember the facts to be. Where there is an objection that is overruled, evidence then received has no special weight just because it is unsuccessfully objected to. Your verdict, as I said before, must be unanimous. I am going to ask you to do a little differently in this case than we have done in the other two, and I'll come to that in a few moments. It is your duty as jurors to consult with one another and deliberate with the view of reaching agreement, if you can do so without doing any violence to individual judgment. Each of you must decide the case for yourself, but do so only after an impartial consideration of the evidence with your fellow jurors. In the course of your deliberations, do not hesitate to re-examine your own views and change your opinion if convinced that it is an erroneous one. Your task is one of conscience, and pride of opinion has no place in matters of conscience. However, at the, sh at the same time, do not surrender your honest conviction as to the weight or effect of evidence solely because of the opinion of your fellow jurors or for the mere purpose of returning a verdict. Let me give you a word of caution, if I may, which I am sure is not needed, but I would like to say it anyway. Your verdict must not be a compromise arrived at by taking a figure mechanically that averages out the figures of the government on the one hand and the defendant on the other, or arrived at in any other mechanical way. Your verdict must be a unanimous verdict on figures representing just compensation based upon fair market value. Your verdict should not be influenced by any feeling of passion or prejudice or sympathy or bias, favoritism or personal considerations, and should only reflect what you fairly believe the property should have sold for on the open market on the date of the taking between a willing buyer and a willing seller had such transaction occurred. You are not partisans, you are judges, judges of the facts, and your sole interest is to ascertain the truth from the evidence in the case. I am going to ask you in this case, because of the great issue that has been made here, to separate your verdict this time. You may do what you have done on the other two cases, insofar as the value of the property taken by the government is concerned. You may say that I find a verdict in favor, uh, favor of X in X amount of dollars, as you did in the others, for the value of the property taken. Then I want you to have a second. There will be asked a second question. Did you arrive at a verdict for consequential damages or severance damages, if any? Your answer may be no, or it may be yes. And if your answer is yes, then you will be asked what you have considered the severance damages to be, if any. So you will be asked both questions. But remember that any claim for severance damages or any claim for damages beyond what is the fair market value as described by both parties must be based upon the evidence and that the burden rests always with the claimant to prove by a fair preponderance of the evidence that that which he says is so rather than not so. When you have reached a verdict and are ready to report, simply advise the marshal as you have done before. Just tap at the door and tell him that you have arrived at a verdict, and he'll come in and tell me, and we will come back to meet with you, and you can then announce your verdict. However, then remember you are not to tell anyone what your verdict is or to disclose it to anyone until you have made it orally in the courtroom in answer to the questions of the deputy clerk. Remember, too, that if you want to communicate with the court to do so in writing using Miss Day, your forelady, as your intermediary and spokesman, and she will deliver that note or message, whenever it may be, to me here. Now, 
One month ago, the Polish government and the Polish people concluded a fair-reaching accord intended to rejuvenate. Uh, 